Hi there, I'm Lock Boyce, and I worked my way through college uh, wrestling alligators and milking rattlesnakes. And um, so I feel like I owe these animals some bit of gratitude. Many of you will find a snake in your house or your yard that looks just like this. This is a black rat snake. These snakes are actually harmless. And um, they climb around. They don't fear people very much. You see these snakes, they're in the roads all the time. This is the snake that gets in your house. This is the snake that you see out in the yard. When you first encounter them, they strike like they're really dangerous. But they got little tiny teeth and getting bit by one of these things about like scratching your hand with a rose bush. And they really don't hurt you a bit. And you see that tongue. A lot of people are afraid of the tongue. The tongue is absolutely non-poisonous. It's harmless. All snakes use their tongue like that. That tongue is forked to give it more surface area. And it picks up the same particles on that tongue that you breathe into your nose and it rubs them against an organ on the roof of the snake's mouth called the Jacobson's organ, which is their sense of smell. And what black rat snakes do for us is they eat mice and rats. And they will eat a lot of mice and rats. So if you've got problems at your house with mice and rats that you don't want, instead of putting out decon, which might poison your dog, or um, getting a cat, which cats become lazy and reluctant to hunt mice anyway, i found, uh, put a few black rat snakes in the house and they'll do the job for you. And they won't bother you, they just kind of lay around. Occasionally you see them moving through the yard. But uh, most of our snakes, over 90% of them are harmless. So, so much for the non-poisonous snakes. We do have two poisonous snakes in this area of Virginia. The copperhead snake and the timber canebrake rattlesnake cross. Now, I don't have a copperhead with me, but they are kind of a caramel covered, colored snake with sort of lighter brown or darker brown hourglasses laid across their back. They're real thick snakes. You usually find them around rock piles, usually away from water. We do not have any poisonous water snakes anywhere around here. So those big old brown snakes that you see striking at people uh, at our big lakes around here, those are all common water snakes. They're bluffers. They put on a big show, but they won't hurt you. This thing will really hurt you. <laughs> this is one of those rattlesnakes, and you can hear that rattle. Any heat? Let me get him out of here. These snakes come in many different color phases. This is kind of the gray or brown phase. And he's just rattling right away. Now, they're basically a very good mouse trap. They lie somewhere and they have heat sensitive pits on their nose, which helps them detect warm blooded animals even in total darkness. They see an infrared picture just like Predator in the movie. So they lie there and when the little mouse comes by they strike it and bite it and then the little mouse gets sick, drops dead and the snake follows it and then eats it when it's fresh killed. So it doesn't have to wait for something to die to eat it. And on the other hand when you don't have arms and legs it's kind of tough to kill something. However, we're large, warm-blooded animals, and we tend to intimidate these things. So what they do is um, they will defend themselves against us. But you can see this snake's more interested in running away than he is fighting. Well, yeah, there you go. Now, when snakes strike, they strike at a speed of 8 feet per second which is about as fast as a man can move his hand or his foot. And they will frequently, though not always, rattle to let you know that they're there. 
Keep in mind, this guy just wants to get away from me. He doesn't want to hurt me. He doesn't want to get in a fight. That always winds up with a dead snake. He just wants to get me out of there. And that's what it's all about. Uh, if they should bite you, it's a very serious medical emergency, and you should seek medical attention. And the rattlesnakes that we have nowadays are much more dangerous than they used to be. Okay. You can see those fangs. They're very long, and they're very sharp. These are the original hypodermic needles. And they're covered with a little bit of tissue there, but I'm going to try and tease that away so you can see that fang. Look at that fang sticking out there. And on the fang is a drop of venom that's coming out of this snake's venom gland, which is located right below his eye. So the venom is a modified form of saliva that you can actually drink <laughs> or you can rub it into a cut on your hand. The only way that you can get a dangerous dose of the venom from our local rattlesnakes is if they actually bite you. And you can see their mouth. Snakes can swallow something nine times as big around as their neck. And that's because the lower jaw is not joined in the middle by anything except tendons. And the, upper, and the lower jaw connects to the lower jaw with elastic ligaments that allow it to move very easily. So this is called milking the snake. And there you can see a drop of venom on the end of a rattlesnake's fang. <laughs> what, this rattling? No, I'm pushing it out deliberately. Uh, the rattle ring means he's nervous. And the rattles are just segments of skin. They get a new rattle. Every time they shed their skin, they can shed four to five times a year, depending on how much they get to eat. And this is a nice size snake, about ready to start breeding. So I'm going to put her back in the box. And we're going to turn her loose, and uh, she'll be a happy camper. I'm just going to put her down right here. And you'll notice that this snake could strike again, you know. She could fight me if she wanted to. She doesn't want to. She just wants to lie there. And she just as soon have me go away. And that's the way all snakes are. They don't look for trouble. They're afraid of us. And they're much more afraid of us than most of us are of them. So I think protecting these animals would be a great thing in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And uh, I understand there is some talk about legislation to do that for at least some of these species. And I would encourage people in Virginia to do that. And be a little open-minded about it. As you can see, here's, we're all standing here next to this rattlesnake. It just soon we all go away. If we go away, it'll go away. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>